Today, uh, we're going to break down uh, a new video from Diablo titled Into the Endgame. Uh, uh, the debate we have, or a lot of times we have uh, with, with my wonderful Twitch chat and community, is a lot of the people that didn't uh, enjoy the beta or maybe have doubts about Diablo 4 as a product. Uh, you know, we haven't seen 90% of the product. A lot of people that enjoy ARPGs know that uh, the end game or in game progression is really where I think a lot of these games shine. Uh, so Diablo must have heard us because they put out a video exactly about that. Uh, let's we're gonna go through it. We'll break it down as we go and kind of make our final comments at the end. Uh, let's get right to it. Here it is. Any second now. We're really excited about getting this game into players' hands, letting them experience this massive world. A main cornerstone of D4 is play your way. As a player continues to advance through the story and into the end game, they'll unlock a ton of brand new activities that provide meaningful progression, no matter their play style. Players will be able to keep progressing in the narrative of the game. Alongside that, the whole team has worked on crafting a variety of different experiences players can pursue. We're going to have an entire world of sanctuary for our players to offer. There's going to never be an absence of something to do. After player has finished That's the campaign, a pretty bold there's claim. a lot more game to go and participate in. They gain access to a special, what we call capstone dungeon that they have to complete. Once they're able to finish this capstone dungeon, they're going to gain access to the first world tier. As you complete the world tier, it will open up the opportunity for you to go into your next world tier. That involves unlocking powerful loot, new items, and more advantages for your player to have a better opportunity. And so, just, so just real quick, it seems like maybe we won't be able to set the difficulty to anything plus or past uh, one until we do the first dungeon, I guess. I don't know. Well, the two okay. term. Whether you're a fan of dungeons, PvP, or just roaming around the world. It's a little a bit different from the beta. I think you could go into two right away. After hitting max level. As your character continues to grow in power, you'll start with the skill tree and expand out into the Paragon system. A lot of the choices the players make are grounded on skills themselves and the fantasies associated with those skills. The Paragon Wars place where we allow you to have a lot more depth, a lot more customization, many more options as you go. You can rotate the board, so you can choose a different path. If you're like, I want to do more strength-based things, or I want these particular boons or glyphs, you can chart your path through it, and they're really a way for you to keep expanding your character and making it uniquely yours. Similar to the Paragon. See, so, so, okay, so there is a tool out there. I'll try to link it in the in the description uh, that, that already allows you to play with the Paragon boards. It doesn't make it that clear that you can actually, like, uh, move the boards around and kind of set up the paths, but there are, like, starting points in each of the four, like, sides, northeast, southwest of the board. So I assume that's how you you would rotate the boards and attach them to your, your uh, initial or your starting Paragon board. So it is it is interesting because uh, we'll see like what orders do you receive the boards in? Do you unlock them in a certain order, or do they, are they like random? And then obviously, I mean, it's pretty it's a pretty significant uh, system. Uh, it looks uh, very like detailed and, and difficult, but um, if the nodes stand true to what has been data mined, it does seem like a lot of the nodes are pretty simplistic. They're just basically stat increases. There were some things that manipulated some of your abilities but they're like few and far between it's not like a lot of of uh different you know there's not a ton of ways to kind of um like you know magnify your power to like uh, x level or or you know exponentially um but it, again it, it is a very um, much more detailed system than what we're used to from diablo so that's very encouraging i think so is the Codex of Power. It's an in-game system that holds the aspects related to the character. You are able to complete a dungeon and they will have a chance to drop an aspect that you can pick this up. This is available this during the beta. to do is take items they're finding in the world and make them more powerful, turn them into one, one of the things that, that One of the things that worries me a little bit about this system is that <clears throat> they'll potentially make players do this every season or, or on, um, you know, on season reset. That, you know, grinding all the dungeons out at once is, is fun. But doing a hundred dungeons, uh, uh, you know, ten times every time the season starts, I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but but hopefully it's just like a, once you've unlocked it, you've unlocked it type of thing. Really special to discover what kind of playstyle really means the most to you. Again, sorry. Uh, this is the uh, th that would be interesting. I just kind of thought about this. 
because that kind of stops or like it kind of gives everybody a base level for season two. Uh, you know, uh, in the old Diablo, they or Diablo three, not that old, I guess ten years old. Uh, they did provide an adventure mode, which was, in my mind, very, very good uh, for returning players or players that have played through a season before, because it lets you cut through the se- the story, lets you cut through all the poppycock, as I would say, uh, of the game. And I think you know that is a very good system if you want, if you expect people to keep coming back and playing each season. So hopefully that's an, another Every way to kind of provide that for players. Is fulfilling and satisfying. Dungeons in particular are really close to my heart. Nightmare Dungeons are going to give the players the opportunity to experience a dungeon that they might have already experienced in their past playthroughs. Okay. They'll enter the dungeon with a found sigil that alters the playstyle and the intensity of the dungeon. Past playthroughs. They're more difficult and they have additional objectives and then they also have affixes which add a degree of difficulty for you and your group to work through. One of my favorite affixes that you can find in Nightmare Dungeons is actually called Hellgate. Occasionally, these portals will open up throughout the area that will just pour out different monsters that aren't native to that region for you to also be dealing with while you're trying to handle everything else inside the dungeon. There's over 120 dungeons to play through and find in Diablo 4, and any one of them can become a Nightmare Dungeon by finding a okay. Nightmare Sigil and then using it to activate the nightmare version of that dungeon space. Everything's a little darker, everything's more difficult. It's going to add a little bit of a twist of flavor on your particular dungeon. There's some targeted activities in Diablo 4 that suit what you're feeling in the mood for. The force of hell are starting to have more influence in certain parts of Sanctuary in the vast interconnected overworld of the experience. And as the players are going into Helltide areas, you're gonna find even more powerful monsters. And by killing them, they'll be able to gain these special shards they can take to go and use to purchase these big rewards that are available at these caches that are found literally throughout Helltide areas. So uh, this is, I think, one of the unique things that people, you know, uh, are sleeping on or, or that are at least uh, kind of mitigating as far as like the end game of Diablo 4. Diablo 4 is in a, a pretty unique situation that it is primarily open world. Um, you know, for the majority of the game, obviously you have these dungeons that they're talking about that you can turn into n- nightmare dungeons or wh- or whatever. But uh, you know, it's interesting to think that you know there's also going to be like uh open world events, open world activities that that hopefully will also remain at in game or remain at in game level. And like they're talking about here, you get some sort of currency for completing them. And, and this could also change the way I think like the seasons work too. And, and they can kind of, you know, add variation here to have what it looks like to progress during a season through the open world as well as the dungeons. So it's, it's an interesting aspect, I think, to, to consider uh, when you talk about Diablo 4's endgame. The sky darkens and the rivers run red, meteors fall from the sky, and the monsters get harder. We really want to create new experiences for the players. There's one I really like called Whispers of the Dead, which you get from the Tree of Whispers. The Tree of Whispers is grim and a little gruesome, but it's also something mystically haunting and kind of beautiful. The tree has a little bit of a grudge against our players, and it would like for them to go serve its needs. So you're going to go serve these bounties, gather different rewards, different items, and bring them back to the tree in hopes that it can exchange you something really meaningful. Maybe you're gonna go to the Fractured Peaks and take out some werewolves that are rampaging in a town. They're contained activities that you can do alone or in a group. We really wanted to create variety for people to be able to spend time where they wanted to in the world. It's very cool the way it's been put together and I can't wait for people to see it, to be honest. Here we go, PvP. In Diablo 4, we have a focus on the world of Sanctuary. And there are parts of that world that we call the Fields of Hatred, where Lilith's presence in Sanctuary has begun to seep through and manifest these poisonous areas throughout the world. When players go to these regions, they get to engage in player versus player conflict. These offer opportunities for the player to collect shards. But there is a little bit of a catch. In order to get these shards back to town, you will need to purify them. Other players will definitely know that you're attempting to purify your shards, so you'd better be prepared to fight if you're going to be playing any PvP, and be prepared that you might lose some stuff in the meantime. Once they've got the purified shards, they can take- uh, By stuff, this is a, a hot button topic, I know, but, but by stuff, I think they mean like your shards. You potentially lose your shards or whatever this currency is if you get killed. I, I can't- maybe inventory items, things not equipped to you, potentially. 
but it seems like it just would just be shards. It's something to consider. I know a lot of people like full or not a lot. Let me let me clarify that. There's a very small demographic of people that are are full loot enjoyers, but those people are very passionate. So so we'll see we'll see uh we'll see what this is. You know, it'll be interesting. Um, but but for for I would assume off of first glance, it is the shards, the currency is what you'll drop, but. Take these, go back to nearby towns to sell them, and then use that to buy a whole bunch of like interesting cosmetic items and rewards. It's cosmetic so items, okay. PVP really equals PvP cosmetic and items. And want to still get loot and still increase their character's power. If that's the way they want to play, they can. Launch is just the beginning. One of the things we're really focused on is creating a living, breathing set of updates for players to engage with after the game has gone live. It's really just going to be a way to keep coming back and experiencing more Diablo 4 in fresh ways. We're really eager to hear all of your experiences and just enjoy the entire story with you all. There it is. There it is. Pre-purchase, if you didn't, 15 times during the beta already. Uh, there it is, guys. Um, pretty cool. Obviously, uh, I think it's just a touch on, like they said, uh, in-game. One of the things we didn't see in the video that's kind of surprising or a little bit surprising is is gear sets. Or, you know, that wasn't in the, um, that wasn't in the beta. And it is something that's usually a staple in Diablo 4 or Diablo game so they didn't mention those before yet i know that they've said something about them but they said they're reworking them or, or something along those lines uh so we'll see we'll see what happens there uh, that's a big usually a big p part of gearing in 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 game diablo games but uh, there you have it uh lots of uh, obviously the nightmare dungeons seem to be uh you know a big staple at in game you have your open world and then of course you have the pvp flag zones which at this point does seem like there's going to be the shard currency and then you'll drop it if you die in the zone. Maybe inventory items, things that you haven't, you don't have equipped on your character. Maybe. That, I, I can't imagine, uh, I can't imagine Blizzard going farther than that. But, but we'll see, you know, we will see. It'll be interesting uh, because, uh, you know, if you've played games like Albion Online, very similar combat style. And, I mean, you do lose everything uh, equipped to you as well. I, I can't imagine them doing that in this game, though. I would almost say the limit for Blizzard would be items that you've maybe looted in the zone that you want to try to get out of the zone to equip or you got to cleanse or something, losing those. But I, I, at this point, I would say if I had to bet, if I was a betting man, I would say just the the currency, the, 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 the PvP currency or whatever it is, that's what you're going to lose um, if you die. Uh, all right, hopefully we know more soon or they continue to release videos like this detailing what will be at the end game of Diablo. But, I, you know, overall, I'm extremely excited about the game. I know you guys are too. Uh, I just want to put this video together because I, I don't typically, or sometimes I miss these on stream. And, I, and it's, I think YouTube's a great place to put it. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the subscription button, the like button, this, all the buttons, just hit all the buttons, even the dislike, I don't, you know, whatever you want to do, you, you just hit the buttons down below. Appreciate you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.